Okay, so you want to start a garden. Now's the time to be starting your seedlings. We're here today with Blue Grijalva. He's our friend uh, and gardening guru, as you can see. Uh, he's going to walk us through what we need to do. As you know, I had cancer three years ago and started an organic garden. The one thing I really can't do yet is start my own seeds. It's been a disaster every year. <laughs> when I do get them to sprout, I take them outside and kill them off in short order. So Blue's going to walk us through it this year and uh, walk you through it as well. So we're going to do some learning now. All right. So Thank we'll you. start with the basics. We're going to begin with, uh, with trays. And uh, just as with seeds or soil, not all trays are created equal. Um, when you're looking for seeds to start, or trays to start your seeds, it's always a good, uh, good time to take into account what you might be growing in your garden. So tomatoes, eggplants, cucumbers, peppers all seem to be perennial favorites in our, in our gardens here in New England. Um, and so with that, you might want to consider a larger cell size for your, for your, uh, your seeds. Uh, this is a 50, which means you can plant 50 seeds here. It allows for a larger root space and uh, minimizes your need to up pot. So if you time it properly, you might be able to take your tomato, your eggplant seeds, and plant them directly from said cell right into your garden or your, uh, your farm. Um, smaller cells here will best house, say, a lettuce or perhaps an herb. Um, and then you can get even smaller. They make them up to 512, which have worked well for, say, onions, but it requires a lot of dexterity and uh, it does, does have its challenges. So I generally use the six packs and stuff that I save from the year before when I buy plants. Is, does that work? I have four packs that I could do tomatoes in. Those, those work perfectly well, perfectly well. What I like about these is that they're pretty solid. Rather than having to make two or three trips from, say, your grow spot, your, your lights, your indoor seating spot to the garden, you can carry one of these durable little trays and it does minimize your time there. So when you're working on a larger volume, we like to try and economize our time as, as best as possible. So that's the one reason I'd advocate okay. for something such as this. And these last quite a few seasons? These last a few seasons, yes. And, and uh, I always suggest that you buy in bulk. Uh, Greenhouse Megastore online, you can Google them. You can buy these in bulk and you can pay far less than, say, the big box stores and they'll be at your door in two or three days. So it's a good, good place to visit for a lot of gardening needs. We visit there. So we're going to move from our from our sales here um, right into some some seed starting mix. And as you the good stuff, uh, yes, yes, great. absolutely. This this is where it all begins right here. We like to follow what we call the uh, the rule of seven. Um, from the time you you uh, germinate that seed, you essentially have seven days to nurture and, and care for that, that germinated seed properly. And by doing so, you're going to ensure that uh, the opportunity for less pest, less disease, and, and overall uh, just less challenges um, are secured. So we start with a mix here of cocoa core, rice hulls, compost, worm castings, and then we finish off with a little uh, little mix of, of minerals, our own little blend of minerals. We'll throw in a little basalt, which is just some rock dust. We'll throw in a little bit of, of uh, calcium, just a touch, just a touch, uh, high calcium, and, and we'll let that blend for a while. We actually get this product pre-made for us, but we add in the minerals ourselves to give it that final touch. Um, and you can see, when compared, maybe we want to start throwing one of these up there, guys. We should get that going. Do we pack it down? or We're going to just throw it right in, and, and yep, exactly. It'll, it'll essentially pack itself down. Okay. We're going to compare it with a store-bought version, and, and one of the primary differences is many of these... It's like, it's like spreading cheese on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> store-bought versions are peat-based. Um, as we know is it's not sustainable um, and that's more like the pro mix that you find in uh, the lighter weight potting soils that's peat based right that's correct that's correct right. so we're done by so we're done here we're so done buying peat exactly right. so this is a fluffy nice looks great you know you can stick your hand all the this way this is up what i want to start, start my seeds natural and organic seed stuff a little vermiculite in there um, 
which is inorganic. It doesn't break so down. I can already smell the dustiness. And you can mind. exactly, exactly. And, and if you are going to use this, which which I'm not saying don't don't use this, then maybe you want to consider wearing a little little mask of some sort. It's very just fine to, in comparison. Just just to protect yourself from from. I found that really hard to water as well. It, stuff floated up to the top. It didn't absorb quickly. Exactly. Now this soil here, I notice, is very moist. Have you moistened it much, or does it? Is it this soil, in fact, has not even been moistened in, in well over a week. So the top, as you recall, was a little on the dry side, but as soon as we stuck our hands in there, it retains that moisture really, really well, but allows for proper drainage, so you're not suffocating your, your root zone there. All right. so. so we'll start with some tomato seeds, and here's a variety of, of seeds, uh, different types of tomatoes, and I'm not endorsing say this company in general but it is one of the seeds that we do use we use a variety of seeds i think seed integrity is very important um, some of our favorite seed companies are johnny's high mowing fedco we like turtle tree um, for their biodynamic practices and of course botanical interest who has been very very kind to us over the last couple of years from here we'll take one of our tomato packages i like to want to open that for one minute sir while i grab my little and knock in the tray. Do you tear the, how do you open these? Do you open the flap or do you tear the top out? <laughs> because I'll be planting the majority of, of, of the seed content, I just tear the top off. Tear the top off. You know, I, I really do. While he's doing that, I'd just like to show you a little of BioCoat Gold. This is a uh, endomycorrhizal seed treatment. It's an inoculant. We're going to toss just a dab of this. Let's see, right into our cup here. To the powder. And what this is going to do, according to the label, is increase the rate of germination and speed up plant development. Now, whether that's true or not, that's organic. That's organic, exactly, exactly. Now, we'll just sift that around a bit, toss in the rest of the seeds. A couple of different items out on the market called dibble boards that are created with little divots, little nails that you can align with your tray size, your 50s, your 72s, your 98s. You can lie it right on top and it'll make holes for you. We actually own one. We do use one. I don't have it today. But the good old finger trick works really well. Um, and I think when you're trying to plant seeds, it's often, well, there's no real magic secret. It's often helpful to try to keep the divot size comparable to that of the seed size. So tomatoes, the larger seed will go a little larger. I'll give you a couple there, sir. So we can sure. throw them in. With tomatoes, I like to try to be precise and just add one cell, one one seed per cell. Um, I it, think again, it minimizes your. And blue, how deep did you go down? Is this about half an inch deep, about a finger? Yeah, about a half an inch. Yeah, fingernail deep. You know, again, I'm not. It's not a precise science, at least when when we do it. And I think that our success rate has been pretty. Pretty good, so I'm just going to stick with what works for us. But we all have tips and tricks that have been passed down from generation to generation, so I definitely yeah. encourage you to stick with those. Don't, if it works, don't change it. Right, but planting your own is the important part of it. Exactly, and I think that's, yeah, that's why we're here, is just to encourage us. <laughs> now we have one seed that's about half the size of the others. Is that any indication it, of its? It very possibly could be, yes, yes. Would but, you double uh, it up or just? You know, if I had an abundance of seeds, yes, I, I would. And I think if, because we do, I would double it up. We do have an abundance of seeds. Um, we have a couple more seeds. We're just going to stick with this beefsteak. Now, while we're figuring out, filling out the last of these here. Okay, I didn't get one of these. Can we just cover these over? That's correct. We'll cover those over and we'll fill up the last tray here just because. Now it's very important, I feel, to keep good records, i.e. label your seeds. The good old, oh, I'll remember what I planted, trick never. <laughs> the Matt McClellan method. <laughs> <laughs> Seldomly works. And I use that lean, method for a long time. Lean the it up against the end of the tray and hope it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> and farming and growing of food is, is a challenge enough task as it is, so I think that the, you know, the more equipped that we can be and, and, and uh, you know, the, the more we can implement help to ourselves, the, the better off and the more exciting the entire experience is. So. And your garden grows. What you, you know, what you start off with isn't usually what you end up with. I know last year I added quite a bit. So Blue, we've got all the seeds in, in the soil, 
we've prepared them all right. And uh, what's the next step at this point once we so have them ready? Next step is we're going to water our, our trays just lightly. I like to use what's called a, a Haws can, H-A-W-E-S. Um, traditionally, they did the metal cans with a nice little handle here. This is something I purchased at one of the local big box stores, but it works really well. And what's nice about the Haws can is it has that simulated rain effect. And I think that simulated rain effect, again, ties into that nurturing aspect that we've mentioned more than once here, as opposed to just a heavy, intense water hose, which can disrupt the rhythm. So we just want to lightly water. We don't need to add any food because our biologically alive seed starting mix here has all the food this plant will require once it germinates. And the seed itself is already ingrained with the food source to keep this, this, this said seed alive for for a short while. So we're just going to lightly light the water. Now, can I ask you, is there a danger in overwater? Because I know I'm probably guilty of it. And if, if there is, how do you know when, when too much is too much? I, I feel that there, you know, there is danger in overwatering. You, you can begin to compact yourselves here. You can begin to, especially after germination, suffocate the roots. So I think less is more. And, and we often say, um, uh, you know, we're eager to add more. Let's add a little more of this or a little more of that. And we call that moron. Don't be a moron. <laughs> add less on. So less on is the way to go. Less is more, going. right? Less is less more. Is exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and there we go. You know, we have a nice healthy tray. The best way to, to know is the feel test. You just feel your tray. Huh. Now, if you feel that now, it feels nice. It feels saturated. And that's also going to be your indicator as to when next to water. You're going to fill that tray and you've already set up a nice little barometer here. So when it feels you know, substantially lighter, we'll go back in and we'll water. And from, from there, you'll be able to dial in, better understand your plants, and you'll have a, a successful growing season. That's great. You brought up a good point, too, of knowing when to water again by picking it up. I never would have thought to actually consider the weight. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the weight test is something Is that else. generally a, every couple days with seedlings? or? Even for, for, from the initial onset, I think all we need to provide this seedling, this seed with right now is, is a, a, a soil, a substrate, a little heat. Um, not even so much light, but light will come into play sooner than later. And, and water, of course. And, and um, once that gets going, then we can start to incorporate the other, the other elements. But, but uh, yeah, this is all it really needs. What about heat mats? Heat mats. We, we have used heat mats in the past. Um, I think that, that there is a time and place for heat mats, especially for the longer germinating crops, your, uh, you know, your habaneros to be more specific, uh, even your tomatoes. Um, sometimes you find genetics that are, are a little needy. We this year have not used any heat mats. We've had success with, say, our habaneros and our tomatoes and, and our peppers. But we started a bit earlier. Yeah, sure. So, so as we are starting seeds, you know, we were trying to recreate an environment where you can do this right at home. So you have your soil, soil starting, seed starting mix. You've started your trays. Now we're going to incorporate lights. And, and I'm a big advocate for what are known as T5 lights. T5 fluorescent lights are small in diameter. They can hang just above the plant, above the tray. It's very low output in, term, in terms of heat. So they're very safe, or safer, um, and, and you would hang those above your trays, you'd water your plant, and uh, as you can see, yes, the T5's here. It's best to have your light hover above the tray, especially after germination. So let's say for the first couple of days when you don't need a light source, but after that first sprout of germination and you start to see, let's say, those lettuce germinate and, and present themselves, we want to hang that light source on the lower end because what begins to happen in my experience is that if you have it too high it will stretch the seedling and the seedling will then expand a tremendous amount of energy trying to reach for the sun so the closer we can have them the more dense the more stocky the more robust of a plant we're going to have so that's why my tomatoes generally yeah, my grow too. tall flop over on their side and that's why when we plant next to a windowsill in the kitchen same scenario it's that diffused light coming okay. through that pane of glass and even here i've raised these i have these lights on pulleys they started low i've raised them to try to accommodate everyone and because this has been a late season here in new england We've had to deal with the elements as, as they've come. So I 
subscribe to the school of 24-7. I keep them on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. There's different schools of thought there. It works for me. It's worked for me, and I, I adhere to that. Um, there's not a whole lot of energy expended used in T5, so shouldn't tweak your electric bills, your utility bills, too much, per se. Um, but, but if you do want to, to you know, be mindful of, of your utilities, probably 18 hours on, six hours off. We're trying to emulate that, that winter still, that breakthrough. Um, but I go 24 seven. It's one less thing for me to remember. I do seem to provide, we seem to provide more light for the plant and it, the plants seem to, be, they look great. seem to be content overall. <laughs> So I guess if I had some parting words, I would encourage you to uh, read as much as you can. The more you know, the more you can grow, we like to say. Some of our personal favorites for the last couple of years have been uh, Steve Solomon's The Intelligent Gardener, Botany for Gardeners, you can never have too much science, you know, in your back pocket. And then, as a paradox to that science statement, we have the Stalinatura, which is the biodynamic calendar which aligns more with celestial uh, succession planning and is one of my personal favorites. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. It will tell you when to plant your flower crops, when to plant your fruit crops, when to plant your, your leaf crops. And if you have any questions, you can email me at blue, spelled B-L-E-U, at newurbanfarmers.org. That's blue with a B-L-E-U. That one, uh, <laughs> to make sure you remember that. That's right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank Wonderful. you very much. Hey, thank you guys. Well, thank you. Nice with us. Thank I've you. learned so much today. I mean, we're really grateful. I really enjoyed so, this. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll be back to do uh, transplanting is the next step. We'll do that. Transplant, so, yeah, up have full we, confidence that these babies are going to grow. Absolutely. Right. Hopefully we get some, some germination over the next few days now that it's warming up. So.